let you know that uh, while this goes on, the 31 has come into pit road. There it is, Justin Allgaier in the brand new uh, Brant colors. He's got damage on the right side as well from earlier. Here we go. Oops, there goes the right front. And even more damage. We got no wall, guys. You okay? Meanwhile, up front, it is Keslowski in front of Trevor Bain. And then you saw the tandem of Kyle Busch and Joey Logano making the swap once again. We are now, after working lap 48 of 120, on our race presented by GoDaddy.com. And the race has been that close. Tomorrow, ESPN in the year of the quarterback chronicles the incredible career of Conrad Holloway, the first African-American to ever start a quarterback in the SEC. ESPN's year of the quarterback presents the color orange. Conrad Holloway story, a film by Kenny Chesney and Sean Silvitz. Tomorrow night, 8 on ESPN. While all this action continues, Brad Keselowski, Trevor Bain, Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, they have fallen two seconds behind that lead group. Let's listen to uh, Kyle's radio. Hey, Joe, when we switch, drag the brake a little bit just to start your slowdown, you know? Because these cars, when you pull out, you just run into a brick of air. These cars help quicker. Yeah, like if you slow down, the, if you slow down just a little bit faster, then we can get a line quicker. That is a lesson in two-car tandem drafting, courtesy of Kyle Busch and Joey Logano. The only problem is Joey can't push Kyle as long as Kyle can push Joey because Joey gets more temperature. And then when he's in front and Kyle pushes him, Joey says, I get a little too free entering the corner. But they're trying to perfect working together and making the change even quicker. All right, thank you, Doc. It's uh, Bain and Keselowski, 1.3 seconds ahead of Kyle Busch and Joey Logano. Then another 13 seconds back to Clint Boyer and uh, Tony Stewart. Then it drops even further back, 23 seconds behind the lead. Dale Earnhardt in seventh with Joe Nemechek, his dance partner. Then Waltrip and Clements round out the top ten. Watching some lap times here, though. It look, does look like Boyer and Stewart are able to pick up a little bit on the leaders. Running just a little bit quicker lap times on average the last few laps. Well, we've completed 53 laps and had eight different leaders with 17 lead changes. And I guess my question for you guys is, we saw everybody able to stay close early, and now as this run has, is it the tire? Is the tire finally going away? No, no, it's this experience level of these drivers that are doing this. They're, these two groups are doing it way better than any other two uh, tandems in this group, in this field, except for maybe now Tony Stewart and Clint Boyer. And I think that's what we talked about earlier, is that experience level really paying off for the cup guys. Yes, yeah, not only paying off there, but you know, as you go back, you talked about this group that Dale Jr. and that group, they've got six or seven cars in their line, but they're doing the old drafting style where they're not tucked up right on each other's bumper. So it's making it more difficult and they can't run nearly as fast. You said we were going to switch before we hit. Why are we doing that? Because of where we're at on the pit road. We're going to catch about five more lap cars. And when we pass them, we're going to switch. And then we'll do our pit deal because you're ahead of him on pit road. See, now that's somebody thinking ahead. Oh, yeah, they got to be planning all of these moves. They're, they're planning every move on the track, and it, as they pit. And next time, by Trevor is asking where to break at, so be aware he may be a little cautiously optimistic here. That's what I was going to say. As they start to make that pit stop, they've got to be careful getting on those brakes not to wreck each other. Going around the 40 once again. As Scott Wimmer's had a very long day. This could separate Trouble some of the cars. The we, got a, we got a we got spinner. Sam Hornish. Sam Hornish going around again. That's uh, right into pit in. And he's going to bang the wall with the left front. So Hornish, who was right, running 33rd at right the time, coming three you. laps down, brings out our third caution of the day, and there's the damage. I don't know how close these guys we got here. Nice were on fuel, but they'll have to be really careful right here as we go well, lap. We just heard that uh, the lead group was getting ready to make a pit stop right then on that lap. So uh, they'll have to make at least another lap under caution before they come down pit road. Let's go back and take a little look, see what happened to Sam. The first crash wasn't his fault. Let's see what happened this time. Now it looks like Todd Bodin got another one there. A 
this point, it looked like he might be able to save it until right, right there. Yeah. Give you another angle. Looks like Todd hadn't quite perfected that push move yet. <laughs> As we talked, these bumpers don't exactly line up, and you can actually get your nose underneath the rear bumper and lift the rear wheels off the ground. That ended a 28-lap green stretch that had been the longest stretch of green flag racing that we had seen. There's an opportunity now for these other cars to close up, and uh, hopefully they've all perfected their little tandem drafting technique, and they can keep up with these leaders. So, as several drivers have experienced, Sam Hornish having a tough day today. Not much of it really his making. No, not that that one was not his fault at all. It uh, definitely got a push from behind. See the guys on pit road stretching, limbering up. And I think we'll see some tire change in here. Yeah, I think we will too, Marty, because uh, even though they probably could run tire wear-wise and probably handling-wise on the set they have, it be it makes sense now under caution to go ahead and get some tires on the car. Two or four. Do you want track Probably position? at this point, I'd make the call for four tires as a crew chief because you're going to have to get a full tank of fuel. This is a good opportunity to go ahead and swap them out. Wait to see how it all changes here on pit road. As again, remember the closed-end fueling system. We'll see how well that works. Let's send it down to Dr. Jerry Bunch. Thank you very much, Marty. They're expecting four tires for Joey Logano. First time they'll have four tires all day long, maybe then two the next time, maybe none on the final stop. Also a chassis adjustment for Joey Logano. Triple bits. Let's start with Dave. Kyle Busch's team, listen to Andy Petrie. They'll change four tires now. They will have options later, according to the crew chief. Vince. Brad Keselowski, last year's series champ, two tires and gas, says it's a lot harder than it looks out there. He's working hard. Jamie. Birthday boy Trevor Bain turns 20 today. They said, how do you enjoy it? And he said, I love it out here leading. He led 10 laps. Left side tires is the call. They said it's going to take longer to fill these cars. Just remember, wait for the jack. He filled it up with Sunoco fuel. He's down and away. Keselowski is first out of the box. Marty. The race off pit road. Keselowski picks up one. Junior picks up five. He was in the right pit box this time. Trevor lost four. Get ready to go green. Two quick updates. The five of Dale Earnhardt Jr. They had equipment. The fuel can got stuck. Just what we were talking about. It fell outside the box. He'll start back in 20th. And the 22 didn't get enough fuel in. Had to come all the way back around. Make a second stop. Mix up on communication for Brad Keselowski. He's going to restart in seventh. Up front, it's Logano, Bush, Bain, Boyer, and Nemechek. And we're green again. Yeah, and we're going to have a penalty on somebody because the seven, the 70, and the 38 were three wide at the start of this race. They didn't get in line, so I don't know whose fault it is. NASCAR will sort that out. It looked like they were arguing over starting position there because they were that way all the way around off turn four. On board with Clint Boyer. Now you see the Gibbs cars have kind of got split up here. Rewide into three. A couple of those cars don't have any partners. And up front, here we go again, as you see four cars trying to pull away from the pack. Just got a little change in who's playing in that mix, as Clint Boyer is the man who is pushing Kyle Busch. Trevor Bain is the guy right behind Joey Logano. Left side of your screen, you can see Tony Stewart trying to work his way up. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is going to get shuffled. Yeah, he's got nobody pushing him whatsoever. You can see just how big a difference that makes. Whoa, four wide at some points in the back of this pack. Look out, guys and gals. Danica Patrick on the lower right of your screen. She's looking for another dance partner. And two cars behind her is her team owner, Dale Earnhardt Jr., trying to come back from that penalty. Joe Nemechek on her bumper. Needs to get up and give her a little bit more of a push. See Landon Castle back out there. He is trying to hook up as well. well DJ, you were asking about if anybody was going to get hammered with a penalty for passing too soon on the restart. The 38 of Casey Kane. Side 
front four continue to run side by side. They haven't been able to get away. Nobody's been able to get an advantage here. All this is going on. We'll let you know the 40th Scott Wimmer has taken it behind the wall. They're going to have some company here in just a second, though. It's like Stewart Jason, pushing Leffler. Yeah, Jason Leffler and Tony Stewart coming in a hurry. Great view it's from high dicey. above. See, they're right there. What you're talking about, they're trying to get that side draft, but it's so hard to coordinate with four cars. Did you notice Tony backed off? I I, I don't know. Maybe. I think he saw a little bit of yeah. action getting ready to happen. They in were front. closing too fast. Tony knows you got to get to the finish to win this thing. And was that only because they were in the corner and you're looking out the left window, really? Because you really can't see when you're straight behind that car. No, and any sign that you see of just a little bit of smoke or just anything that gives you that inclination that something may be taking place, you have to, to back out right then because that's what the drivers are telling me. It's just almost impossible to see anything as you're latched on. Well, the lead pack right now is six cars. Tony has hooked up again with Leffler, and they're trying to fight their way through those groups that are in front of them. Further back, a total of four seconds is where we find Clemens, Sorensen, Patrick, Bliss, and Almirola. See Leffer flirting that wall. He's way up on the outside. There you can see the gap, and here's what's happening behind the top six. There's Stephen Wallace, he's trying to get help from Landon Castle. On board with Dale Jr., and Jr.'s getting shuffled. He's gonna go to the outside. And that's Keslowski right beside him. Casey Kane is getting a black flag, and he has not served his penalty. Now he yeah. is coming in. They were going to put the black flag with the white cross on him that time. Now let's watch this again, DJ. Yeah, and see, they were lined up this way. As Andy pointed out, this was back in turn three. They just were having an argument over who was going to start where. Didn't get that settled, and you can't do that. Let's go back to the battle for the race lead. Joey Logano has it with Trevor J Bain pushing. There is Kyle Busch and Clint Boyer, third and fourth, but maybe not for long. Here they come on the top side. We've passed halfway of this 120 lap, 300 mile race. We've had 18 lead changes, eight different leaders. See, to behind the, this group, Danica Patrick is now kind of broken away from it at the head of it. She needs somebody to draft with. Tony Stewart still trying to find an opening. Well, he's going to make one here in a second. <laughs> now there is what you were talking about, Andy, and it looks like Reed Sorensen may be the one to say, okay, let's give this a try. Yeah, she actually broke free of this group by, you know, seven or eight car lengths. And uh, by being by herself, obviously, she couldn't maintain that pace. Yeah, and right now she needs to just back up a lot. I know it's hard as a race driver to, to realize that you need to either put, apply a little bit of brake or come out of the throttle a little bit, but get that 32 attached. They could really break away from this and start going towards the leader. Now, look at this. You got Boyer and Stewart now right behind Leffler and Trevor Bain. All this action continuing. The left side of your screen, you see those three cars. And here are the battle for the race leaders up front. We have 65 laps in the book here at Daytona, our race presented by GoDaddy.com. Under Green, past halfway at Daytona. Reminder that ESPN, the home court of college hoops, continues today at 4 Eastern. Reggie Jackson and Boston College face the number 19 North Carolina Tar Heels, led by Tyler Zeller. Then at 6 Eastern, Isaiah Thomas and the Washington Huskies face a key contest against a ranked Pac-10 foe. They take on number 13 Arizona, led by Derek Williams. It's college basketball on ESPN today. Both games also available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone. A little past the 150 mile mark at Daytona International Speedway in today's NASCAR Nationwide Series season opener. From the pit studio, Alan with Rusty and Brad watching the two-car tango play out here today on the newly repaved Daytona International Speedway surface. Drivers figuring out that that two-car draft is going to be what separates them from the pack. And you're looking at the two twosomes that have separated themselves from <laughs> fifth place by six and a half seconds. Two by two, that's all I remember all day long about this race. I've never seen any racing like this. 
Like it or not, we got it here. And they're running awful fast doing it this way. You got to have a teammate. There's no doubt about that. It's not a whole lot about the car right now. It's all about who you can hang out with and trust. Yeah, and the, the real racing's going on from like 12th back through 25th. That's where the guys are really trying to figure out how they're going to go forward. The cats out front, Logano, Bush, Boyer, and Stewart, they're just kind of checking out on everyone and uh, getting ready to sort it out amongst themselves. We've only got 48 laps to go. All right, Trevor Bain, we saw running a